Welcome back, you guys. I'm Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. And this is Two Aprons. Tonight, we got something really good for you. Like, they're all good. But, you know, I say that a lot or whatever. Um, seared tilapia and lemon caper sauce. With orzo, zucchini, and roasted peppers. Ooh, yummy. Let's see what we got. Hmm, <laughs> here we go. That looks like some good spices. So this is our spice blend tonight, and it is onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and whole dried parsley. Ooh, yummy. That looks mm -hmm. great. It's one of D Gerald David's favorite spice blends that we mm -hmm. use. Here's that creamy, creamy. Some fromage blanc. Ooh, the peppers. These are shishito peppers, which is mildly spicy and an East Asian variety. So I'm very excited to use those. And how do you say that? Shishito? Shishito. I like that. I like that. This is our orzo pasta. Which is a pasta, not a rice. <laughs> it's the pasta that looks like a rice because it's so nice. Um, but not so nice they named it twice. That's right. <laughs> Just so they, very large zucchini. zucchini. I didn't even call it the right thing. I know what this is. This is lemon. Good job. <laughs> Ooh, my favorite. My favorite. It, never, it never is big enough, is it? So the lemon caper sauce tonight is butter based. And this is bad butter. Mm -hmm. This is the fancy. This is Virgil Blanc. And I did look that up because I have not used it before. It is the fresh tart juice of unripe wine grapes. Sounds pretty so bougie. Awesome. Yeah. I like how even when the grapes weren't good enough for the wine, you're still like, I found a use for that. That was pretty cool. They were good enough. They just weren't ripe yet. <laughs> well, you, that's what I mean by not good enough. Longer, yeah. like they but sometimes you got to pull the crops before they These are capers, which I love because they taste like the ocean. They do. They do. Yummy mm -hmm. parsley. Mm -hmm. Fresh, fresh, crisp, yumminess. Green parsley. Some nice garnish possibly there. Get rid of the box. I think the first thing we're gonna do is fill up a pot with uh, three fourths water, salted. Okay. We have the water already in ours to save you the torture of having to listen to running water a hundred times an episode. <laughs> the, of course, we salt the water, and that's because it interacts with the pasta a certain way. Um, does it say that we go ahead and start the boil, or do we go ahead and prep the vegetables first? Uh, we're gonna get the pasta going first, and we're gonna get that water boiling, and then get the pasta added. So we've already washed our vegetables, so while we're bringing that to a boil, we can go ahead and prep some, because this pasta is only going to take seven to nine minutes. Yeah, you be and behind you, behind you. Thank you. Double knives, ninja. Ah. Oh my god, I don't even want to see what's going on right now. You take one, and I'll have one, and we'll both have one. Oh, That'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, I know I chopped the parsley, because that's what you always do with parsley. Well, I guess not always, but a vast yeah. majority of the time. I'm trying to think of a scenario where parsley is like kept whole. You know, usually it's a garnish, so some people can leave it whole as far as a fan, uh, little... Depends if they're eating it or not. If you're eating it, you finally chop it because you kind of sprinkle it on top. Some people put like a sprig of parsley on the side, being all sure. top chef about it. And then it's spriggy. It's very spriggy. <laughs> I kind of do it kind of big chunks so you can tell it's parsley. There we go. But why though? Probably because you give a little presentation. I don't want it so fine that it just gets lost in the mess. Right, give it that little pop of color. Mm. We're gonna cut the, mm. so I've quartered the zucchini, which is still huge in this case, but um, and then I'm cutting it into just about half inch pieces. That looks really good. We're gonna get those in a pan in a little bit. And the peppers probably need to be chopped as well. And I think we can probably do those together once I'm done with this. Do we need to core DC these or do I just chop them? Um, you will have to look because I am not positive. I think you just chop the ends off and chop them. I think I do too, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I will double check though. I was like, really? That's the <laughs> studious thing. Because the second we don't so, check and just do it, it's going to be wrong. <laughs> uh, and you know, so just as cut off and discard the stems, cut crosswise into one fourth inch pieces and thoroughly wash your hands after. And it makes sense because if you look in here, that'd be pretty hard to get in there and core. And again, because it's a mild pepper, um, apparently you don't need to de seed it, so. Yeah, the seeds aren't the worst part of it. It's not gonna light you up, theoretically. But as Gerald David said in the last show, no you guarantees. can never tell with peppers. No guarantee. But most of the time, this one's pretty mild, so I'm not a big concern. They're like buying something at a flea market. It's as is and no guarantees. <laughs> we all take our risk in life what we do for vintage people. That's right. And sometimes that $20 bookcase is worth it. But a lot of times that $2 can of beans is not. Oh, gross. Who's buying beans they, at a... They sell beans at the flea market. They do. 
Yeah, I haven't been to a flea market well, in a while. They have like. everything. <laughs> well, they used to. That was pre-COVID. I don't know what post-COVID is. I think canned beans. Is it so toilet paper and ammo? <laughs> so what's next? Do we uh, chop the papers at all, or do they um, stay? Our water is still not quite there. So I know that we do quarter in DC the lemon, so I'm gonna go and prep garlic. that. Garlic. We did not prep our garlic. It's right here. So there we go. And it says two cloves, so we're gonna do like four or five. But is that right though? We uh, quarter in DC. Quarter in the DC. Lemon? The juice of two lemon wedges. So yes, I'm gonna say like you at least quarter in DC. But yeah, quarter in DC because that's what the sauce is gonna be made with. That makes sense. Here's a trick guys might not know. You get more juice out of the lemon. You kind of roll it around with your palm like this. You'll see bartenders and such do that a lot. So I've poured a pretty decent sized garlic cloves here that we're going to use. And just a note on that trick, um, only do it before you cut it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do it before you cut it. Don't try to do that after. It's not the same. Not the same effect. No, that'd, that'd be a much worse effect. <laughs> Called rolling your. I mean, it will cause juice, but you know. Yeah. Now I'm deseeding it, which y'all know how to do this. Get the icky out of the yum yum. <laughs> Boom. That's the we official go. term. It is. Right. That's exactly <laughs> culinary school that I snuck oh. into one time. Boom. Love that class at Joanne's. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Sometimes the best lessons are learned by yourself. All right, look at that, yummy, delicious lemon wedges, ready to pow. I'm gonna help you with this, uh, oh, yeah. this right here. Ooh, all right, so you guys know, press it with the knife, it kind of makes all the stuff pop off. It takes a little practice for you, like, comfortable doing that without them, like, shooting out or whatever, but once you do, it's, like, pretty fast. Well, I'm like trying it. to make sure it's, like, sitting on the flat, on a flat edge yeah. where it's not gonna, like, Rock and cause like issues or hit the floor and be a waste. That too, because <laughs> you've seen that happen on this show before as well. They do. They'll run for it. They'll get rabbit. No, that's uh from a uh, cool hand Luke. Oh, see, I'm not a shade in the tree, boss. Shade in the tree, boss. That's not one of the boss. two movies I've seen. Oh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, but yeah. When they make a run for it, they go rabbit. Or I stole from some movie. I think it's cool hand Luke. <laughs> He's seen so many, he can't keep up with them. Oh man, I love movies. If you ever want to talk about movies, you hit me up. I got you covered, doesn't matter. Old, new, doesn't matter what genre, doesn't matter. He's actually had me watch silent movies with him. Oh yeah, it's a big Charlie Chaplin playing. Let me dig it. Oh. And along with Ernie Kovac, people like that, the classics. Learning a lot of good cinematography technique. A little shout out to uh, my boy Hayworth for tipping me onto that. Give me some of that classic education of practical camera effects. Which, you know, in the live event industry is all you got. We don't send nothing to post. We either get it right or we get fired. <laughs> That's the way it goes. You got rehearsals. So you, like, you get a little bit of a try. So I'll say that. You do get rehearsals. And not like, sometimes you are thrown right there. Right? But for the most part, you do get rehearsals. And that helps. Depends on how much they want to pay. <laughs> That's right. And it's funny how the people that you can tell they're taking their events serious by the amount of resources they put into it. You can tell they've understood and really gotten the the knowledge and the statistics of what can go wrong and how much does it cost to react to it rather than proactively um, put a safety nut in, put a safety nut in. Um, but it's also just experience. You can also just tell the people that this is their 100th event. You know, they've learned from experience. Experience goes a long way. What is next? All right, so I think our water should be boiling now. It is. So we want to go ahead and get the orzo in there. Boom. Got our little thingy here. Is no, this how you do it? No. Oh, Let's throw the orzo in the pasta. Or the orzo in the water. <laughs> See, they show it on the picture differently, so I'm always confused a little bit. Well, you'll use that when you strain it. But, oh, is that um, what it is? Yeah, but not to put it in, because that's when it's finished. And then we're ah. going to cook that for nine to seven minutes. Yep. That's it. So we've got our timer on going for eight. Nice so in the middle. Between. We'll check it. Yeah. We'll check it. You know. What's the, um, so looks like we're going to be getting the old frying pan out, a little olive oil action and doing the vegetables. Yes. We're going to turn that on to medium high, or if you know us, we do medium because it just works better on our stove. Mm -hmm. And our stove's weird, so it's like number four. <laughs> Numbers. So I drizzled the olive oil because you know we don't want to drop out. So. <laughs> there we go. And what is it we're going to put in there? I know it's the 
So it's going to be um, the once the pot is nice and hot, we're going to add the zucchini and the pepper pieces in an even layer, and we're going to cook those in an even layer without stirring them for two to three minutes. That makes sense. That um, makes sense. Then we'll add the garlic, another two to three minutes. Um, yeah. Awesome. Then we'll be ready to deal with our fish. I am excited. I'm so hungry. Mm. Oil always takes a minute. You can tell when your oil is ready. Cause see how slow it moves right now? That's a good comparison. So it's not ready. But we'll put it back on. And once it heats up, it'll move like water. So once your oil is good, that way everything kind of gets touched by the oil a little bit, which will help the salt and the peppers and the seasoning stick. I heard your pasta is starting to boil up like that. You can either put mm. a little olive oil in it or you can turn the stove down a little. It does not have to be on high to boil. So That is true. Once it's boiling, I usually just turn it down. Yeah, I've turned it down than, a little bit. Rather than use more resources. Um, but if for some reason you know you're adding water or something like that, there are reasons where I see people add olive oil just to control it, but keep it at that constant temperature. And this is ready. See how that moves fluid now? Boom. And as you guys can tell, I'm hoping you can hear us better now. You want to add the peppers and stuff over here? Since you had it off the burner? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. But I was going to make another point before we did that, but it's all right. We can go ahead and do this. We'll, yeah. Move this out. I can hold this. You'll scoop them in there. Yeah. So we're just going to throw them on in. And they're going to go in in an even layer. Ish. Because this pan is not going to hold all of this in the even layer, so. It won't. You'll just so have to kind of. stir it a little bit. Make it get in where you fit in. This is a ginormous cucumber. Or it was. zucchini, my bad. I, yeah, I keep you doing, keep the doing same thing. that. <laughs> All right, and this is a little easier because they're all together. There Boom. we go. Do I need to do anything to it? Um, just kind of, well, I'll get them. If you were going to say something or whatever, I was going to get those and just. Well, no, if you don't just read possible. the instructions for me and tell me if it's salt, I just want you to know it's salt and pepper. That's what I can't remember. Because usually they have you salt and pepper we'll do everything. that after the, um, we add the garlic, we add salt and What's pepper. What's the timer we need to set? So for that, it's two to three minutes. So we've got our timer set here for three. So we've got awesome. that going. So I was going to say, if you notice it now, you can probably hear us a little bit better. Um, with the AC's going on. That's one of the problems of having like a home studio set up and not having like a proper studio and proper lights and PAs and all the stuff and things that help you keep everything in order. We have to manage everything ourselves. And um, even for a small show like this, that can be a little bit. Uh, to do along with research ingredients and figuring out um, especially with technique you know because a lot of these recipes easy peasy but the technique is what you're kind of learning and a lot of people I think are intimidated and that's that gap we're trying to close so that with a little bit of knowledge you can see that even you even you can kind of do what we're doing you know uh, we're doing this with desk lamps and a GoPro you know <laughs> we're making it work with what we got um, that's kind of just what I wanted to fit in there so I apologize for the ACs being on we're, uh, we're doing our best to get it all together um, show your love and support, share, like, subscribe, send us money, buy t-shirts, do all the stuff and things. We appreciate you. <laughs> so what's our next thing on the agenda? So we're just going to let those go for another couple of minutes and then we're going to add garlic and salt and pepper. Um, that is going to be done in about two minutes. Ooh, yummy. So we'll get that all strained and then just put it back in the pot. I'm going to go ahead and throw the salt and pepper on it so I don't have to do everything once it's done. Um, that way, it also gives me something to do, because we're just kind of staying in here. Alrighty then. Boom. What's going to be next on that? Is it going to be the fish after the vegetables? Yeah. Zipping right along. We are. This is a very easy <laughs> recipe. I like it. I appreciate when they make it easy on us. Um, especially when I appreciate too, when they make it a little um, short, doesn't take that long. You know, I think this recipe is supposed to take like, what, 20 minutes, 25 mm, minutes? 40. 40? I was way wrong then. The, um, what do we have to do with these? Do we just add these one at a time? We don't have to mix anything together or anything? No. Mm -mm. Um, no, because the butter gets added and I think with the spice blend and then that gets spooned over the fish while it's cooking. Oh, that's really um, yummy. Yeah, the buttering papers. The that's spice blend goes yummy. on the fish and then the fromage blanc gets added into the pasta and vegetables. Um, Ooh, that is end. delicious. Yeah. So you know what we could do? We could go ahead and start cooking the fish. Um, I guess we could. If the advantage of having now. two frying pans, <laughs> um, you can accelerate your cook time sometimes because there's elements that this kind of assumes that you only have one. Will you grab it? It's yep. right under there. Uh, but if you do have two, you can go ahead and start the other item. You don't have to wait. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to deal with that pasta in about 30 seconds. So get that going. Another drizzle of olive oil. This will be for the fish, um, which is delicious tilapia. 
-hmm. Then we're going to season with some delicious Ooh. seasons. Ooh. That's so and some salt and pepper. Well. The, um, that's the medium. That, so that's the zucchini and peppers if y'all swish those around a bit. All right. Then what do they need? Um, then we're going to add, well, we might want to let those go a little bit longer since they weren't in an even layer and they haven't all softened to that point. So I think we could let those go another okay. couple minutes. That is our pasta. Set the timer for one minute. Let's let it go okay. a minute. I don't want to get quite a couple because this is pretty good. up there to eat. There we go. Orzo, as it's draining, look at that. Yummy, yummy, misty, sp uh, spooky uh, Halloween cloud. Turn the heat off because we don't need that anymore. Use that heat for this pan. Look how clever I am because it's already to temp. Turn that eye already off. Um, how much time have we got in this minute? 19 seconds. Oh, all right. Just tear me two sheets off and then set that roll aside. This is going to be what we're going to use to... Yes. As most of our continued viewers know, all 50 of you, the, um, <laughs> you usually pat and dry the meat is the first step. She's going to get that out we'll for me. Fish out. Boom. That was the timer for our zucchini and our peppers. I'm going to take that off the eye just for a second. Look at what we do next, which I think is the garlic and uh, salt and pepper. It is. Which I already did the salt and pepper to make this a little bit easier on me. So now all I have to do is say behind, because we learned about that the other day. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not technically behind, it's just a little code word for be aware, pay attention. Am I going to put it all in? Yes. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Delicious. And rinse that off. Awesome. And then we're going to cook it for another two to three minutes, stirring frequently. Yummy. Do we also do the juice of two lemon wedges? Not yet. I feel like that comes into the vegetables at some point. Mmm. Mmm. Yummy. Nope. And the minute that garlic hits the heat, you can just smell the aroma fill the air. And it's, ooh, it's so powerful and delicious. Let that do its thing. I'm going to kind of fluff this just to kind of... The last two lemon wedges get served on the, at the very end on top. The last two? But what yeah. about the first two? They go on the fish. Ah. Or something. Well, that but makes not sense. Into the pasta and vegetables. That makes sense. Alright. Well, you can dump that in the pot when you're done. Yeah. Just kind of aerating it a little bit. Boom, out to the pot. There we go. Orzo. <laughs> Alright, rinse this guy out a little bit. Yummy, yummy. So, what's going to be our next step? I know the fish we pat and dry, and then what? Well, these are stirring frequently, so I'm going to step over here and do that. Um, once we get the fish taken care of, we're going to salt, pepper it, and put spice blend on it. And then we'll get that going as well. Tilapia, which I don't really know that much about. So tilapia is like a really mild white fish. Um, pretty much it's going to taste like whatever you season it with. So if you put your season blends on, salt, pepper, um, it's going to be flaky and taste like your seasoning. Which is good since this one's one of Gerald David's favorites. It is, <laughs> it is. We'll do salt and pepper. And then what is the seasoning again? A combination of what? So it's onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and then whole dried parsley. Can you turn that heat up? Yeah. There we go. And that's going to be our seasoning blend tonight. Which is one of my favorites. I love it. Especially with fish and with shrimp. Or with anything, really. Really with anything. <laughs> yeah, we've used it on a lot of different things. Um, it's one of their... Uh, spice blends they typically send mm -hmm. or either we pick things that tend to have it mm -hmm. probably too um and we really really like it all right let's get that spice blend y'all i need to get back in the gym like that was harder than it should have been <gasps> so we've got our spice blend going on now and then what we'll do is get these in the pan and then season the other side as well. Perfect. That looks yummy. I want to stir the vegetables, but I've touched the fish, so I don't want to touch anything else right now. Yeah, that's fine. I'll rub it in. Yeah, that, that's, that's fine. There we go. No, let's get it back on the heat. I don't want it off too long. Yeah. Because we don't have that kind of... That's going to go down for Thanks. three to four minutes. Should be that middle timer primed. Yeah. Boom. Now my favorite part, I get to wash my hands. All right, so we are now adding our 
vegetables are zucchini and peppers and garlic and all of that into our orzo pasta. Let me put this over here. Getting it all mixed up, turn around so I'm not a stranger to you, putting my local crew on this shirt to good use. Boom, look at that. That smells good. I wish you all could smell the garlic. It's so delicious. What else do we need to do? Um, right now we're just waiting for the fish to cook. That's pretty much it. When we have this fish, we'll put down our pasta base and we put out the fish. We garnish with the parsley. When do we add the capers in the... So we're going to make a pan the sauce, sauce while it's in, in the fish. With, like while the fish is in the yeah. pan with it. Um, the fromage blanc is going to go over the vegetables in the orzo. Is that what um, they call it, braising juice? it, when they keep dipping the spoon in and keep putting it over? Yeah. I didn't know that was a fancy uh, I term I took from <laughs> Iron Chef. <Chips. laughs> so we got our capers, the butter, the marsh blanc. Are we done oh, with the season? we season? need to season the other side. Oh, I'm glad I asked. Yeah. Because like, there seems to be a lot left. <laughs> do some pepper. This is why we always keep the instructions close so we know what's going on. It's just starting to smell quite delicious. Mm -hmm. Cause it's getting all cooked. And then it's gonna go down another two to th three to four minutes. Two to three minutes. Then we'll make the pan sauce um, mm -hmm. with the butter or the butter sauce, the lemon caper sauce with the butter, the capers, and the ragu. Is that what it's called, ragu? Like ragu, yeah. but ragu? Ragu. Oh, ragu with a V. Yeah, V E R G U S, ragu. And also the juice of two lemon wedges are going to go in with that. Ooh, what's that? That is our fish. So on the first side, we're now going to flip it and cook it for two to three minutes. We'll put it on for three because we typically do fish for um, the, the longer time. time. Yeah. Just like chicken. Although, you know, fish isn't nearly as... as Risky. Risky, yeah. Thank you as for filling risky. in that word. As risky as chicken is, so you can kind of ish it a little bit. And the more you get used to um, the cooking temperatures and stuff like that, um, the easier it is just to eye it and you know what good looks like, you know what it should smell like. The more um, you do it, obviously, like, the better you're going to get at it. So some of it does have a little bit to do with, like, experience. Um, I would follow the instructions to the maximum if you feel like you don't have a lot of experience with it. And then as you start to feel more confident, like, hey, my chicken's been done every time, you know, yep. then you can start to like maybe ish it a little bit. And that's another reason why a lot of uh, beginning cook meals will have you cut your meat when you serve it. That way, the idea being the chef looks at every piece of meat. They get you used to what what it should look like and also be able to spot something if something's weird. Right. You don't send that out the door. So you don't serve that to anybody. Chicken is raw in the middle. You kind mm -hmm. of figure that out before you place it in front of someone and told them to dig in. Yeah, before we put them in harm's way. Exactly. I'll get our little plates ready. Okay. Because we're getting close to that. Orzo fancy pasta. It smells so good. How is orzo made? Is it just little dough balls they kind of just cut up to look like rice? I don't think so. Orzo doesn't particularly look like rice to me like to me it does couscous is like balls and like some mm -hmm. of the other ones are like a little more around those are not like balls of anything it's just flatter pasta i'd have to look up about it i don't really remember i think i've looked it up before but i'm not retaining or recalling that right we now we got a so. pasta attachment so our curiosity for pastas has increased we're going to start making our own which will be delicious yes. i'm very excited to learn more about that i'm very excited that was my birthday present from my mom and dad thanks guys yes it was <laughs> awesome Looks like we got about a minute left. Oh, this is smelling good. This is smelling good. This is the hardest part about being a big guy when he's cooking, because I just want to eat. <laughs> it's only through past experiences. I'm like, nope, you have to wait. And if you're you sly and not on a camera like we are, you can like snack as you go, which y'all see me sometimes. I well, do that anyway, but there's nothing but... left to snack. It's all put into things. Oh, I'd be eating that orzo if I was ever standing by it. Like... That's true. <laughs> That's true. You wonder the... sometimes, he's like, hmm. This looks like less than usual. And I'm like, I don't know how that it's a happened. It's a <laughs> like if I made dinner, yeah. <laughs> the same thing happens around cake with me. <laughs> and we can go ahead and start on that sauce. We've got like 12 seconds left. All right, so, so what do we add? Um, we're going to add the butter, the capers, and the verjou, and the juice of two lemon wedges. Butter, capers, and the verjou. Hmm. 
and the juice of two lemon wedges. And then basically we're just gonna let that butter melt and kind of like spoon all of that liquid that's in the pan over the chicken for the one to two, or chicken, over the fish for the one to mm -hmm. two minutes that it um, continues to cook. Should I flip the fish again at this point? Mm, it doesn't say to do that. Then I won't. It just needs to add it and then cook constantly spooning the sauce over the fish for one to two minutes. So our timer's going for two. And we just wanna be constantly spooning that liquid over the fish. And one of the tricks I do to get the butter to melt quicker is I kind of cut the butter into pieces with a spoon. It also makes the butter kind of more evenly distribute in a situation like this. Exactly. Good job. Mm -hmm. That looks so good. It does, doesn't it? And then, yeah, just grab a little and spoon it over, yeah. Just like Boom. that. So delicious. How long mm -hmm. does this stay on for? Two minutes. One to two minutes. So our timer is going for about a minute and 15, and you're, we're just going to do that constantly, and I'll switch out with you if you get fired. <laughs> Uh, well, and constantly is a little, as long as the juice is sitting on the top, depending as long as it's not, because sometimes your pan size is a little bit different, it won't sit. But this is pretty much, this is a lot of juice, so it's pretty much surrounding the whole thing, which is awesome. But you do want it on the top too, so it doesn't dry out, and so it gets in everything. Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to describe, is it is well over the top. It is up there with everything, uh, whether I spoon it up there or not in this particular case. Whitefish is very, um, like, mild and really versatile like that, so tilapia is a good fish to work with if you're wanting something that's not too fishy and something that's just going to kind of be mild. Um, it's also really healthy. This is, again, um, the one of the box meals we use as partners with um, oh, there certain we go. other weight loss um, companies. And so this is one of the meals that's like less than 600 calories, which I love personally because it makes me feel good. So pretty much we played this first, right? Yeah, but you we've got to add the fromage blanc to that. Ah. We're going to take that off the heat. All right. So it doesn't get too dried out. And to the pot of quick pasta and veggies, we're going to add the fromage blanc and the juice of the remaining two lemon wedges and stir all that up. And then we can season it with salt and pepper if desired. <laughs> You can get the rest out of this spoon if you want. No, I, that spoon's contaminated, okay. so I've got this. Yeah, thank you. Sure. She's not aware that it's been touching the cooked fish. I don't want to stip it in here yet. Because um, part of it was uncooked in the beginning. It needs to be a little bit... The spoon did not... I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little overly cautious, but I wanted a fresh spoon. <laughs> I did. I wanted a fresh spoon. That was a little gig pirate action Kitty had to do. I stepped aside for a second. She was like, sure, let me do this real quick. Um, those of you all in the industry know what I mean, gig pirates. Um, I miss my gig. That's what that term is kind of sneaking up in my head from. I miss being out there and doing live events all the time. Miss the crowds, miss the people. Uh, but not so much I want people to die for it or whatever. You know, so I definitely look forward to getting back to it. Thus the event master's apron. Oh, smell that, Kitty. It smells awesome. Look at that. Oh my God, that looks so right? good. Boom. Uh, so anything else going here other than the fromage blanc? Uh, you did the lemon juice? Uh, the juice of the two remaining nope. lemons goes in? As I look over yeah. here, they're not there, and the answer's no. That's going to go in, and then that'll go down, and the fish and sauce will go on top. And then we'll garnish with the chopped parsley. And then we're done, yeah. and we get to eat. Yummy. See that as I stir that up? Not that you can really tell the difference between lemon juice being there or not, but it is. Oh. You can tell when you taste it, even if you, you can. can't tell the difference visually. <laughs> that is true. That is true. So let's Definitely get our little Lynn's area second. here ready. Let's get all this stuff. Did you put the, you didn't put the, you did put the bridge in the sauce. Good. Yeah. For some reason, yeah. I hadn't seen you do it. and was like, oh no, <laughs> it goes like, oh, in no. there. It's like, oh no. And I'm guessing because it is like unripe wine, like unripe grapes, um, it probably does need to cook a little bit. Um, I don't know that. I didn't try I it. Think but so. I would think you would not want to add that raw and, you know, not cook it. If it was missed. But it wasn't. Boom. This smells incredible. That looks really good. I'm very excited about this. Mm. Sorry for the scraping. <laughs> We're gonna get every last bit out of there. <laughs> the ASMR people out there, you guys are probably loving this. So. <laughs> Look at that fish. Didn't that turn out really well? It did. It's really pretty. Look at that, y'all. Oh, that looks good. 
It's hard to keep fish in one piece. I tell you what, presentation is something I haven't quite mastered yet. <laughs> it is hard to keep that. And then you just kind of can drizzle the pan sauce over if you want to a little I'm bit. I'm gonna get a, a spoon for that. Oh, it's not like a plan. My sauce spoon that I wanted to get specially just for the sauce. Boom. T loves hers. I do. I'm like a big fan of almost all sauces. But that okay. is a butter sauce, so like that's plenty for me. All right. <laughs> that's true. It is very delicious. It just means it's very unhealthy. All right. Look at that. That is and yummy, yummy. Now we're going yummy. to garnish with our parsley here. Remember to turn off your ovens. <laughs> that is an important part of that. Yes, and I forgot to do that earlier today, so good note. Yeah, you'll garnish for us. I'll catch up these dishes a little yep. bit. We do like there. to cook as uh, clean as we go, I say, as I say, as we say, I should say. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. That is delicious. Seared tilapia and lemon caper sauce. With orzo, zucchini, and shishito peppers. Ooh, yummy. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Look at this deliciousness. You can do this at your own home. You really can. You don't have to be spending a hundred bucks at a restaurant or risking COVID. You can have it drop shipped to your home, have it be safe, have it be delicious, have it be easy. It doesn't really, really doesn't take much. And you'll be right there with us. Mm -hmm. so, we love you guys. Thanks, like, share, subscribe. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Double knives, ninja. Ah. Oh my god, I don't even want to see what's going on right now. <laughs>